Hola equipo y bienvenidos a un nuevo video de Generato Solo Espero que todos estén muy bien Familia, les cuento que el día de hoy tenemos un invitado especial Pero antes de presentarlo y de darle la bienvenida Solo quiero invitarlos a que me sigan en mis redes sociales Y sobre todo que se unan al canal de Telegram Porque se vienen novedades y sorpresas No digan que no les avise antes Bien, les comento El día de hoy tenemos a Arjun Kalsi Que es el jefe del ecosistema de Mantel Network Que vamos a conocer el día de hoy Y también, ojo, es el responsable del crecimiento del ecosistema tema de Bit que ya muchos conocemos. Bueno, sin más, Arjun, bienvenido y muchísimas gracias por estar aquí. Uh, thank you, thank you for having me. Uh, so, uh, hey guys, I'm Arjun and uh, I'm the head of ecosystem at Mantle. Um, and uh, you know, prior to this, I was with uh, with uh, Polygon and I've been in 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 the Web3 space since 2016. Um, and currently, my responsibilities are focused around building out the entire Mantle ecosystem, all the different partnerships, um, and and you know all the different teams which which are involved in that in that uh, space. Oh, that's great! Thank you for sharing us with this with with us. Please tell us what's your main role at Mantle Network. Sure thing. So, as head of ecosystem, I'm responsible for the adoption of the network. So that would mm -hmm. mean all the DApps which are deploying, all the users which are using our network and also all the technology and the tooling which has to go to make that happen. So, for example, all the different integrations, some of the decisions based on technology. Um, so these are some of the things which I need to do. Ultimately, my main um, motive would be the growth of the network. So all the things I need to do to promote the growth of the network is, mm -hmm. is basically my responsibility. Nice. Sounds great. So. Uh, could you please tell us what are your main responsibility related to the Bit ecosystem? Sure, definitely. So I think, uh, you know, the BitDAO ecosystem is already pretty large, right? And, uh, and, and you know, again, BitDAO has, is one of the strongest treasuries, um, you know, on-chain treasuries in the space. Um, and of course, one of, uh, you know, the one of the biggest, um, you could say, motives of, of mm -hmm. Mantle is to be able to build more and more utility uh, for the BIT token, right? So we want to turn the BIT uh, community, the already large BIT community into, into the most impactful and uh, sort of the, mo the largest community in Web3. And to do that, we want to be able to build more and more utility for the BIT token. So for example, in mm -hmm. Mantle, the BIT token will be used to uh, used for gas fees. It will be used for staking at the infrastructure level. It will be used also in the ecosystem across all the different D apps, which are going to go live in, 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 in the Mantle network. So for example, all the DeFi apps, all the gaming apps, like everybody would have some sort of bit, um, maybe liquidity pool or be using bit in some fashion. And by building, uh, a, a, you know, lots of multiple different types of utilities for the bit token you know, we can create a situation where the bit token continues to accrue more and more value as time progresses, thank, you know, as, as Mantle continues to grow. And if the bit token continues to accrue more and more value, the DAO continues to become more mm -hmm. stronger. And if the DAO is stronger, it gives us the ability to launch even bigger and bolder projects. So a big part of what, what would be considered Mantle's um, success metric is to ensure that, you know, the DAO becomes stronger and and uh, more resourceful with time so we are committed to the bit community we are committed to the bit token and for creating you know multiple different types of utilities for the for the bit token oh that's great that's great so maybe we are on time to to have more bit maybe bit can <laughs> explode in the future we can take advantage of of mantle of course oh. so i i read that you were working at polygon Please, could you please tell me about some of your major achievements you had in your previous work? Um, sure thing. So I was with Polygon for uh, for quite some time. I was with uh, them for about two and a half years. So I joined just when the mainnet went live. Um, and uh, so essentially I was brought on board to build out the ecosystem, to build out the different teams, to do business development, growth, etc. Um, so, I mean, I've, I've done, a, I've donned a lot of different hats at Polygon. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, I, I don't know about achievements. I mean, achievements is always a team effort. So I, I don't I don't think it's right for me to take full credit for anything. But I would say that uh, some of the things which, which struck out to me the most were building out the different BD teams 
and setting you know a really strong business development culture within the team so much so that you know everybody today says that the polygon bd teams are the best um and also like some of the major partnerships which we were able to crack um for example meta reddit uh, disney uh, world pay mm-hmm. uh, new bank so i was yeah. in a number of these like robin hood for example so i was involved in a number of these partnerships um and these are especially difficult um uh to sort of uh, you know convince uh, these kind of big web2 companies to start number one doing web3 and number two mm-hmm. you know going down that journey with 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 polygon so so i think these are some of the things which i which i'm quite uh, quite yeah, nice good experience in polygon so we are going to start about to talk about mantle because the people would like to know about mantle please explain us in simple terms for people who are new to crypto ecosystem Sure thing. So Mantle is an Ethereum layer two uh, scaling solution. So essentially, mm-hmm. we are building our own blockchain uh, on top of Ethereum as a layer two blockchain. Uh, we've gone with the optimism uh, sort of design. So we are doing an optimistic rollup, and I think what makes uh, Mantle maybe uh, unique from possibly other layer two rollup solutions. is that uh, number one we've gone with a modular blockchain design so if you mm-hmm. look at current blockchain design uh, it tends to be monolithic in nature which means all the components within uh, within the network are very tightly knit uh, whether it is data availability whether it is transaction processing whether it is um, transaction finality uh, in modular design what you do is you build the entire blockchain in modules and the advantage of building something in modules is that when you want to upgrade it you need to just swap out one of the modules instead of trying to do like a major change so think of it like a car for example right now in a car instead of uh using uh, screws to you mm-hmm. know to, to keep all the components together you weld all the components together so in monolithic design everything is welded together So when everything is welded together if you want to upgrade you need to basically upgrade everything at once and it's extremely difficult to upgrade but if everything is screwed together you can always open the screws and change the parts so exactly. if you have a car for example you can change the engine you can change the brakes you can change the wheels you can add new rims like you can do different things and modular design allows you to do that so we've gone with a more future focused modular design which allows us to continuously upgrade the chain and ensure that we always bring the best technology in front of the developer so this is i think something very unique about mantle in terms of technology also i think which is very unique about mantle is also in terms of our ecosystem power so we've got you know uh, the backing of bitdao right which has got a huge uh, resource pool uh, mm-hmm. to help us you know build the project so we've got almost 2 and a half billion dollars in 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 the dao uh, all of these funds are on chain so you know the the users or, or or the viewers of the podcast can go and check on the website um at the same time we also have the support of all the different bitdao ecosystem partners so for example we've got the support of bybit the exchange we've got the support of the venture arm of bybit um which is called mirana ventures and also all the different um all the different uh, companies within the bitdao ecosystem are supporting us so what that means is that we we have the ability to take a project from all the way from zero to investment and all the way to listing right and also give it access to a big user pool which is the entire community of bitdao um so i think this is something which is very unique uh, i don't mm-hmm. think i don't think there's i don't think there's any ecosystem out there which has this kind of flexibility uh, for a builder uh which you know where we are able to solve all the different problems in one place um and also it's a competitive advantage which is almost impossible to replicate so oh, that's right so i think yeah so i think at mantle we've got some very unique things happening in technology and in ecosystem so i think as a project we are quite exciting and uh, we are very committed to ethereum the all the funds of bitdao are on ethereum which is why we felt that we should go with an ethereum roll up uh design where we can get high security high speed and and also you know be able to give users and developers a, a very high quality experience within you know mm-hmm. as it's all in evm so yeah 
Thank you. Thank you very much. So you were talking about Bybit, you were talking about BitDAO, Bit, and I have a graph and I would like you to explain us sure. the relationship between Bybit, BitDAO and Mantle so that people sure. can can, under, can understand everything. So can, can you see the screen? I can, I can see the screen and okay, great. So I think this is a great diagram. So let me try and explain. So the okay. Bit token, which is at the center is mm -hmm. the, is the native token for BitDAO, right? So if you look at the BitDAO treasury, a large part of the treasury is in Bit token. And of mm -hmm. course, you know, the rest of it is in stablecoin, ETH, etc. So Bit is the token for BitDAO. At Mantle, we are also using the Bit token as gas fees, as staking token, mm -hmm. and also as the ecosystem token. So you've got both BitDAO and Mantle creating utility for the Bit token. Um, and, uh, and, and this is very important because if the bit token continues to become stronger, then the DAO will continue be to become stronger. And we can, you know, then like, like I said earlier, build more and more exciting projects. Sure. And why Bybit is, Bybit is important is because Bybit ultimately seeded BitDAO, right? So when BitDAO was, uh, was created, you know, it had its own token, the bit token. And what Bybit also did is that from all the volume, which Bybit generates, a small mm -hmm. portion of that, uh, 25 bips, uh, if I were to be specific, was sort of a, a small portion of the volume was sent over to uh, BitDAO, which is how BitDAO got its capital. So this is why Bybit has been a very big proponent or supporter of BitDAO, right? And and I, I feel that this point is also very unique, you know, because if you look at other exchanges out there, like everybody... Like, for example, when Binance created Binance Smart Chain, like every exchange mm -hmm. created their own chain, like Wobi created Heco Chain, OKX created their own chain, etc. But the founders yeah. of Bybit didn't do that. The founders of Bybit created a DAO instead of creating a chain, right? Which is a much, much more decentralized way of thinking mm -hmm. and decision making. And it is from the DAO that the Mantle project has got its uh, funding and it's being, you know, so Mantle is being incubated by BitDAO. So I think this is something which is uh, very, you know, interesting and, and exciting about the ecosystem in general. And of course, you know, Bybit will continue to support Mantle as well. So, uh, you know, if if uh, if we're able to bring very high quality projects to Mantle, if builders build great projects with, with you know, high quality and large communities on Mantle, then of course, you know, we can take them to Bybit uh, for listing, right? So Bybit is always on the lookout for high quality projects. So as long as we can build those, you know, if we build those on Mantle, then we will also have Bybit support with listing. And then we could, you know, take projects all the way from zero to 100. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then you know, be able to build like really, really large unicorn projects on Mantle. Perfect. So I have a question. You were talking about uh, the possibility to make a staking. And mm -hmm. here in my, in my family, I call family, my audience, we love passing incomes. So oh, you mean that we are going to have like a DEX working with Mantle to make staking? Oh, hundred percent. So they will be staking across multiple different, um, uh, parameters or, or multiple different places where you can stake the token. So you will be able to stake it at the application layer, which is like dApps, like DEXs, mm -hmm. uh, you know, options protocols, etc. So there is that layer. And then you will also be able to stake the bit token at the infrastructure layer. So for example, we are looking to decentralize the sequences of, of mm -hmm. the optimistic yeah. rollup, right? So with decentralized sequences, you would have to have some sort of, um, crypto economic staking. At the same time, we also plan to have, um, or we al already have data availability. So we are working with Eigen layer to, mm -hmm. uh, to, um, uh, sort of integrate data availability. It is already live in testnet. You can go to the, you know, testnet block explorer and see the Eigen layer data, uh, data batches. And essentially, um, with Eigen layer as well, you would need to have some sort of crypto economic staking there. So you would have to have bit staking in Eigen layer to secure Eigen layer. So, so this is kind of, um, uh, kind of, uh, where, you know, you have different places in which you can do staking of the bit token. Oh, that's great. That's great. And please tell us what does mantle aim to achieve and how? Sure. So I think mantle's main mission is mass adoption of web three technology. This mission also comes from BitDAO's own mission, which is to promote more and more Web3 technology in the world and to get, you know, to sort of incubate more and more newer concepts. 
mm-hmm. and and different types of concepts in in web3 so so mantle's goal is mass adoption uh, to do mass adoption of web3 um you know we need to for example build you know great dapps we need to make it very easy for developers very easy for users we need to be able to bring together all the different elements of the web3 ecosystem which is and you know and which is liquidity daos a, a chain and exchange an investment arm so if we can bring all of these different moving parts together then we can essentially create something which is which can become a really strong engine uh for mm-hmm. the growth of mantle network and like i said like this is something which no other network has so it's a very unique uh, strength of of the mantle ecosystem so this is kind of our mission and uh, you know how why we feel we are confident that we can do it nice so you just answer my next question and ba- but maybe you can add something more okay. Uh, to what makes mantle unique compared to other ethereum layer 2 solutions sure so uh, I, i think i covered some of the points but i'll just uh, you know mm-hmm. maybe uh, reiterate and 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 on sort of rephrase that there are two things which make mantle very unique right number one like i said on the technology side where we've gone with a modular stack design so we are the only blockchain which has data availability already uh, integrated in the testnet phase and it will also be there in mainnet we've gone with eigen layer a very popular data availability type of solution um mm-hmm. uh, you know we will also be decentralizing our sequencer so we've gone with a modular chain approach uh, we're working with different sequencer designs we're working with different prover designs so on a technology standpoint we are very unique and i would say that our technology is very cutting edge when compared to some of the other blockchains out there I think and and all of this is within EVM right so it's a fully EVM compatible chain which is super easy to use um for any developer mm-hmm. so this is on the technology side and on the ecosystem side you know we are the only sort of chain out there which has the support of such a large ecosystem um of of bit right which also has liquidity which has an exchange which has so many different moving parts uh and and uh, you know all of these different um you know companies are working together to make mantle successful right to make the bit token successful and mm-hmm. i think this is like something which is very unique um in in the ecosystem space so this combination of of cutting edge technology and you know large and 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 you know strong ecosystem is, is something which is which makes mantle very unique amongst all the other types of solutions Oh, great, great. So you were talking about modular blockchain rollups. I heard about data availability, the centralized sequencer. Could you please explain us the the fraud proofs? Sure. Um sure, definitely. Um so in general, w- what are fraud proofs, right? So in in a blockchain or in optimist in, in sort of a rollup design, especially in optimistic rollups, what you have is that whenever transactions are like you know done by the user, blocks are created. right and blocks contain many transactions and what sequencers do is that they take a batch of blocks they compress those blocks and they create two things out of those blocks right number one they create a fraud proof right and number two they create mm-hmm. a roll up data hence the name roll up right and both the fraud proof and the roll up data are essentially sent to ethereum and and uh, and, and and this is uh, extremely important because if you have the roll up and you have the proof on ethereum then you have the ability to recreate the proof. so so the roll up data which is created by the sequencer is basically just enough data for anybody to recreate the proof so when you put the proof and the roll up on ethereum anybody on ethereum can independently recreate the proof and thereby check it right and 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 in mm. check the proof is valid or not and in the optimistic roll up uh, scenario what happens with those fraud proofs is that uh, every time a sequencer is submitting a proof it is also submitting a bond of of along along with the proof and this bond essentially is is money right so think of it mm-hmm. like a person is creating a proof and then staking money on it saying that you know i stake money that this proof is correct right oh, and if the proof so- is proven to be wrong then the money is lost right so this is a game theoretical way of checking whether a transaction is valid or not So think of yourself Louis like if you for example checked mm-hmm. like somebody is so for example let's say you are you are checking somebody's question paper for an exam right you yeah. check the paper you write the marks and then you stake some money on it saying that i am 100% sure this is correct like this is mm-hmm. this is the correct like uh sort of uh, solution to the to the question paper 
so it's something like that and 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 if anybody proves to proves you wrong then you lose the money so this is sort of a wow. guess, like, you know the optimistic way of solving it where whatever is the fraud proof you are assuming it to be correct and somebody else has to prove your wrong doing right so okay. instead of assuming that you are wrong and then proving that you are correct we assume you are correct and then somebody has to prove that you know if you're wrong then somebody has to prove that you're wrong or not and this is why it's called optimistic in design where optimistic means you you are optimistic that it's correct so this is uh, optimistic right nice and, uh, yeah. Thank you for explanation and for the example, because with the example, it's easier for us to understand. And we have one last question. Mm -hmm. If we talk about the roadmap, could you please tell us where are we and what's next with Mandel? Sure thing. So the testnet is already live and, uh, you know, we already have, I think, over 300, 400 projects deployed on our testnet. So every hackathon we do, we get minimum of, you know, 30, 40, if not 60 projects deploying on Mantle. Um, and also many other dApps are now deploying on Mantle. So, so we've got a lot of traction there on our testnet. Our mainnet is planned for end of Q2, early Q3. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we plan to have the mainnet out by that time. And then, you know, we plan to do like a lot more adoption. Uh, Eigenlayer should ideally also be in mainnet by, uh, by the, I think, end of Q3. So we will have full scale data availability by that time as well. Um, you know, into integrated into our network. And we plan, uh, plan to also have fraud proofs already integrated. And we plan to have decentralized sequencers already integrated uh, by the time, you know, we hit Q3 of this year, Q3, Q4 of this year. So, so by, so the mainnet goes live by end of Q2, early Q3, and the full design specifications are, will be achieved within this year itself. Oh, nice, nice. So we have a, a good roadmap. So I'm going to invite later my audience to, to get involved in Mantle. But before 100%. ending the interview, mm -hmm. I would like you to extend an invitation to the people to get more involved mm -hmm. with Mantle and to be able to use, to use this new blockchain out of, and of course, maybe you can extend an invitation to have an hold beat. <laughs> So I, I would say that definitely I encourage the audience to try out our network. You know, you, you, you can do it with your MetaMask wallet. It's very easy to use. I encourage you to, you know, try out some of these, um, you know, apps. We also have a meme competition going on right now. So you can mint a meme as an NFT. So I encourage you to, you know, check it out and have fun with the network, right? And, and, and sort of also give us feedback um, on your mm -hmm. experience. And I think with respect to the bit, token like i would just say first thing like you know not financial advice <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but but uh, i would i would just say that like i said you know we, we want to build a lot of utility and value for the bit token uh, because you know we we believe in 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 the idea of the dao and whatever we can do to make the dao stronger is is the mission for mantle um mm -hmm. and um, and yeah like uh, I, I feel that uh, you know maybe before mantle the bit token the only utility the bit token had was around governance right which in which it could be used for votes with which you can you know um, drive the liquidity of bit dao but today uh, you know after the launch of mantle it has multiple types of utilities so we definitely feel that by building more and more utility for this token we can definitely uh, create a lot of value for it um, and and this value would then reflect in the DAO as well, and then this would give us, you know, uh, the wherewithal to do even bolder projects in the future. Do you want to say to the audience something else, and before say goodbye? Uh, yeah, I would just say that uh, you know, number one, you know, Luis, thank you for having me uh, on the show. My pleasure. And I would just you know uh, ask the audience to just just try out our network, have fun with it, follow us on Twitter, uh, join our Discord channels, uh, our, our Telegram channels, ask us questions. Um, you know, we've got a lot of exciting uh, updates to, you know, to come in the in, in the weeks to come. Uh, we've got a lot of interesting dApps deploying as well uh, on Mantle. So so stay tuned. Um, and, uh, you know, and then I guess, I'll you know, we can maybe talk once the mainnet is live. And then, yeah, I wait, I wait for our next conversation. Perfect. Thank you, Arjun, to be here. It was a pleasure to, to have the interview with you. And of course, everybody is invited to, to use Mantle to get involved. And um, we hope yeah, that we can have you maybe, I don't know, in maybe some months to talk again, what's next with Mantle at what are the news for this big blockchain? Sure thing. I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arjun. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. 
Familia, espero que les haya gustado la entrevista y que hayan podido haber aprendido un poco más. Déjenle abajo un poderoso like a Arjun en nuestra agradecimiento por la información que nos ha compartido. Yo desde aquí los invito a que se involucren un poco más con Mantel, puedan informarse, recuerden que todos los links van a estar abajo en la descripción y sabemos que esto va a ser un fundamental para que a largo plazo también el precio de Bit por ahí pueda aumentar. Igual, como siempre les digo, hagan su propia investigación. Eso ha sido todo y nos vemos hasta la próxima. Gracias. Chao, chao.